morning. Today we're going to go over um, the Canvas page real quickly again, and then we're going to go over the answers to the sample test. And then if you have questions or you missed something, then you need to just let me know. Um, and we'll go over those questions. So on Canvas again today, and I probably won't do this every day once we're just a little more familiar, but again, um, I posted what we're doing today. Um, it'll be, it always be the top one, so the, uh, notice I put it above yesterday's, but Skype at 11.30. I've sent you all invitations to that. If you're having trouble with the invitations or if you like dismissed all of the <clears throat> alerts that you're getting because they're annoying, you can always go to your Skype and go to your calendar and then you can see on here today's meetings that you're supposed to join, they go in order. Um, so you can always join that way. Your sample test key is right here. That's what I'm about to open up. Um, and basically, I just want you checking answers or asking me what to go over if you missed something uh, and letting me know. This is a scanned image, so I'm actually going to open it up um, here. On Canvas, it's probably going to be all multiple choice. Um, I know I haven't done a lot of Canvas quizzes or any assignments, but I do know how it all works. Um, there's probably going to be a time limit. I also know how to check if you are on other pages and things like that. So just making you aware that I am aware of all of that. I'm going to move this over. Okay, so you're welcome to open up the sample test key on your end, but basically right now I just want to know what questions you have, and I'll show you how to work them out. So anybody wants to take the mic. <clears throat> Number one. Number one. All right, number one asks you to write it in standard form. Why does that look different? Because I'm not on the right thing. Number one asks you to write it in standard form. So remember when you write a polynomial in standard form, they need to be in decreasing order of the exponents, and you also need to have um, all of your combined term, all of your like terms combined. So when we look at the first two terms, a negative 11x squared plus a 6x squared is going to be negative 5x squared. Then we have the positive 2 that is, <coughs> has nothing to combine with it. So there it's either A or D. And A says a quadratic binomial and D says a cubic trinomial. So quadratics um, have x squareds in them. Cubics would have x to the third. Trinomials have three terms. Binomials have two terms. And I believe, uh, yeah, the right answer is A. So it is a quadratic because it has an x squared as the highest degree. And it is a binomial because it's two terms. So this one's letter A. Next. Number two. Number two. Are we serious? Are we, is it because we really want to know, or are we just going to go right down the line? Okay, so match the expression with its name. So this is in standard form. Uh, the degree goes from 4 to 1 to 0. It has three terms. So the 10x to the fourth is one term. The minus 7x is the second term, and the positive 2 is the third term. That makes it a trinomial. So that rules out all three of those. It is a fourth degree because the highest degree term is 4. That answer is B. Twenty-two. Okay. Ooh, what are we doing?
doing here? Simplifying. Okay, so simplifying the expression, we actually have the distributive property twice. So you have to distribute that first part, then distribute the second part, and then combine all your like terms. So when we distribute the negative 2a, it only goes, it's only being multiplied by the two pieces in the parentheses. So this gives us a negative 2a to the third plus 8a. Now we have to distribute the term in the back. So that's plus a times a squared is a to the third, a times negative 3, negative 3a. And now we're going to combine our like terms. We have negative 2a cubed and a positive 1a cubed. That is negative a cubed, or you can write negative 1a cubed. You have a positive 8 and a minus 3, so that is plus 5a. Let's go three. Is that who was that? Is that Ben? Yeah. Yeah, I think he was trying to sound like me. <laughs> okay, number three. So number three asks you to find the degree of the monomial. So a monomial, remember, is just one term. There's no addition, there's no subtraction. So what you need to do here is add all the exponents. So 7 plus 5 is 12, so the degree here is 12, and it comes from the 7 plus 5. Now, that's different than if you were to have something like this. 7m to the 7th plus n to the 5th the degree of that binomial would just be a 7 because you look at the term, the highest degree term. Here, this is all one term. There's no addition or subtraction. It's one piece. You add them together. Next, anyone else? Let me see if anybody else jumped in. Aaron, Jalen, Kyle, no, Macy, Pete, and I got all you in there. I don't know what happened to Serena. She must have lost internet. Anybody else have any other questions? Twenty-one. Thanks. Okay, twenty-one. We have the distributive property just through that first binomial. And then you have this term back here that we'll have to combine in on the end. So 2x times 7x is 14x squared minus 6x. And then we have the minus 4x in the back. Those two terms need to be combined to get 14x squared minus 10x. Okay, so when, you, when you're asked to simplify again, it's making sure you, you've distributed where you can and you've combined all of your like terms. So there's nothing to distribute here, it's just the first binomial plus the second binomial. So we're combining like terms. 3x squared plus x squared is 4x squared. Minus 6 plus 1 is minus 5. Sixteen and seventeen. Okay, so sixteen and seventeen, similar concept. We're combining like terms. The thing with sixteen is that it has that subtraction sign. So remember, it's kind of like having a negative one distributed through the parentheses. You have to remember in that very back term that you're subtracting negative ten x. So there are no cubed terms. So four x cubed. We have an eight x squared minus three x squared. That's going to be five x squared. We have a negative x minus negative 10x. So that's the same as negative 1 plus 10. So that's going to be plus 9x. And there's nothing to combine with the 21.
Number 17 then, again, combining like terms, this is more like 14, so you're just doing whatever sign is in front of the number since it's addition. So you get 9y squared minus 4 plus 5 is plus 1, or just plus 1, just plus y. And positive 5 minus 3 is plus 2. Thirteen. Okay. All right, so here's one of the big ones. This is where we can't do the distributive property, or we can't do foiling because we technically don't have a monomial and that doesn't match. This is where everything in one parenthesis has to be multiplied by everything in the other. You can go this way and draw lines like this to remember, or you can go backwards the other way. 3n times this, 3n times that, 3n times that, negative 4 times that, negative 4 times that, and negative 4 times that. That way is a little bit easier because you don't have uh, so many errors going all crazy. So I'm going to start with the 3n times 2n squared. That's 6n to the third. Then 3n times 5n plus 15 n squared. Stop me if I make a mistake. 3n times 4, 12n. Now I have to do everything with the negative 4. So it's going to be minus 8n squared minus 20n minus 16. Now we combine like terms. 6n cubed doesn't have anything to combine. I have 15n squared and I subtract 8n squared. That's 7n squared. If a positive 12n minus 20n, that's minus 8n, and then a minus 16. So which one does that match? My thing says letter C. Yes, C. Uh, do 10. Yep. So when you have a parenthesis squared, it means there are two of them. So we have a 2x minus 3y cubed and another 2x minus 3y whoops yeah cubed so this is where we're gonna foil 2x times 2x is 4x squared I'm gonna do my inside and my outside terms together so that's negative 6xy cubed and another negative 6 xy cubed for a total of negative 12 xy cubed. And then you have to do your last terms. A negative times a negative is going to be a positive. 3 times 3 is 9 y to the 6th. So that's letter B. Thirty-four. A review? It sure is. Okay, well, it's actually this. x minus 5 squared means you have two of them. Remember, it doesn't mean square the x and then square the negative 5. That's not what we're doing here. This is foiling. You have two binomials, you need to lay them out next to each other. So x times x is x squared, minus 5x, and another minus 5x is minus 10x. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Thirty-eight. Oh, this one's fun. OK, so this is from the first half of chapter 7. Um, I've got B's and C's inside the parentheses and outside. So the first thing you have to do is apply that. So everything inside is getting squared. I'm going to rewrite what's in the beginning because I'm not dealing with that yet. Um, times, this is going to be 3 squared, which is 9, B squared, and C to the sixth. Remember that a power raised to a power is multiplication. That's B to the first. Now I can put everything together. 5 times 9 is 45. 
If I have b squared times b squared, that's b to the fourth. We're adding exponents. Um, c to the zero power is just one, so then I'm left with c to the sixth. 45 b to the fourth, c to the sixth. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so write it in standard form, name it based on its degree, and then based on the number of terms. So this is similar to the first two multiple choice questions. <clears throat> when you write a polynomial in standard form, it's in order of decreasing exponents. So 2x cubed plus 4x squared minus x. That's 3, then 2, then 1. The highest degree, or the degree, you look for the term with the largest exponent. That's this one. It's a 3, so it is a cubic. The term name, there are three terms. Here's the first term, second term, third term. That makes it a trinomial. Um, I want to say this was from lesson 7-5. If you didn't write those two charts in your notebook, it's going to be in your best interest <clears throat> to go back and get those written in for the test. So you can use it as a reference. Okay, what else? Again, that answer key is online for you to check your answers if you want to. Can you do 19? 19, yes. Okay, distributive property. <clears throat> There's a term out in front, a monomial that's being multiplied by everything inside. 15n to the fourth. Remember when you multiply, you add exponents. Plus 12n to the third plus 24n squared. None of those are like terms, so you can't combine any of them together. <clears throat> my plan for the test is to do multiple choice or maybe like you know in a problem like number 18 I could have some drop down boxes um, I probably will put a little bit of review from this bottom but not everything obviously I can't have you like graph an inequality system on canvas um, but most of this other stuff I could probably fit somehow into multiple choice. It will not be this long. It won't be anywhere near this long. Um, and it's because I love you. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, it's because I don't want to put all that into a Canvas quiz. So, But I do love you. I do love you all. Do you have any other questions? <laughs> if you don't have any other questions, I'm going to go ahead and close this. Um, let's see. Did I cover everything in Canvas? I think I did. So tomorrow what you'll look for, um, we will be live. I will go live with you at 1130, and that will just be to kind of talk about the test. You know, use your notebook, use a calculator, use pencil. Don't use any other resources. Be honest. Um, and then I think for the initial, I think it's just going to be one attempt to start. And then we'll look at how we might go through and do test retakes. Um, and let's see, did I get everything you have? The only thing you have to submit at this point is 7-8. Once I get more grades in, um, we'll talk about how we're going to do homework corrections because I know a lot of you are going to want to do that. Um, tomorrow the hope I've got almost everything graded except algebra so tomorrow the hope is I have all the algebra graded and then you know you can take your time over spring break I know that seems like I don't want to do schoolwork but if you're stuck at home why not why not get caught up several of you have videos that are missing so if you have a missing video you need to send me a picture of that through email 
um, so that I can update it. I have five lesson or I have five assignments in the gradebook, and they're all your videos from this nine weeks, which is seven five through seven eight. And there are a lot of you that have some missing, especially from those last few days. I know some was like absences, like I know Bryce, you were absent one day, but I put it in as missing just so that you would see that it was missing, if that makes sense. <clears throat> have you put in the last? No, nope, haven't yes. done that either. No, I haven't done that. And so that'll be another thing of once that test goes in, how do we do retakes? I wish I could like schedule you guys to come in here for like an hour one day. They won't let us do that. Um, you know, I, I hope you're following the news. I'll, I'll get off. I'll turn off my recording here and get off um, in just a.